Hey everybody, happy Friday. This is another live episode of Between the Sheets podcast here on the United Broadcasting Network, Pound UBN Go. Um, hey, I hear some feedback, just saying. Um, you can hear us the first and third Friday of every month here on Facebook Live. After the show, you can see the video on the Between the Sheets podcast YouTube page and all the audio portion is available on Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Google Play, blah, 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 blah. Um, don't forget, follow me on Instagram, QTE Brad, and please like the Between the Sheets podcast Facebook page on, guess where? Facebook. Um, other than that, um, you can call in. Don't forget, you know, we want you to call in. We want to hear what you have to say. We'd like you to pull a seat up and listen and talk and chat. And it's 323-524-2599, 323-524-2599. And the number will come up at some point, Tony Christian, um, who was running the boards, they'll put it up. We have a lovely bunch of ladies uh, today. Um, some are here all the time and some are new and nonetheless, Mara's got big hair today. I like it. Um, so, <laughs> so I'll go around the room and then of course at the end, I always keep the guest for last. Um, we will start with the Brady Box Bunch to my right is Cheryl Murphy. Hi, Cheryl. How are you? Oh, Gay, it's been a while since I've seen you guys. I miss you. I'm so uh, excited to be here tonight. I can't wait to see you at the studio, though. I know it's got to be coming soon. It's going to be coming soon. It, it will I be coming so. soon. As I mean, I've been vaccinated. I think, you know, whoever's been vaccinated, fine. But I think, um, I really do believe, I keep saying it like, maybe in April, but I really do believe in May, we'll start doing it from the studio. Um, I will. I will at least so, and I've been vaccinated. I know Mara's been vaccinated. Um, double V, double V. Um, <laughs> Cheryl, I'm sure you've been vaccinated. Um, so you know, we're. I just need to get back in the studio. I'm tired of Zoom. I really am tired of Zoom. But, um, <laughs> but thank you for joining us yet again. We missed you. Um, then the box underneath is Mara Shane. I'm sorry, I have to do my thing that Angie and I came up with, my friend. This is double V, yo. <laughs> I'm double V in LA, <laughs> whatever. Nice to see everybody, hi. Hi, I like your hair, hi. you went lighter, right? Oh yeah, it's, you can't really tell, but it's pretty blonde. Like, it is blonde, oh, that's your yeah. hair. Nice job. No Thank extension, you. right? Extension? No, this is all my hair, it Beautiful. needs to be cut. Like, yeah, this is me. It's beautiful. I uh, thank you. I'm excited to be here with all you guys. And then I have the center square with a guest, but I won't announce her until later. Cara Noble. Hello, everybody. I've got my friend with me. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, my hair. I'm down. I've got like three extensions left in my hair. <laughs> One and two of them are knotted together. But uh, literally, <laughs> this is why you can't see my hair because. If I blow dry it, it's okay, but otherwise it's very fluffy and I'm not used to it. It's my <laughs> real hair. I mean, I will show you. Oh, she's going to show us. Uh -oh. But I mean, it's okay. I mean, I'm just That's getting good. used to it. It's nice. It looks great. Right. I again. love it. Thank you. It, when you touch it, though, it's very fluffy. It's like my mother's. She's oh. got 12 chopsticks in it. <laughs> <laughs> then we have... Durga McBroom on the left no. corner. I'm only single V, but uh, Monday I will be VV. <laughs> You're going to be there. You're going to be VV. I'll be double V. Oh, you'll be big V. <laughs> like for big G, little G. <laughs> yeah. and, and then back again, we have Roxanne Rosen in the bottom corner. Hi, Roxanne. Hello. Hi. I'm um, glad to be with you all today. Did your hair get lighter too? It yes. did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she check did out the, the same back. thing. Can you see the back? Oh, oh yeah. Nice. Wow. That's oh. interesting. That looks like the Wonder Woman insignia. On it your does. Superpower. I'm a quadruple Aries, so I have to. What? <laughs> Whatever. We won't talk about Aries because our guest is an Aries. We're the best. Um, yes, saying. Yes, she is. So let's talk about. Thank you, Christian and Tony, um, at the boards. I appreciate you guys running it uh, for us uh, seamlessly every other week. So thank you so much. Um, let's see. What do I say about Penny Cohen? 
<laughs> that I can say on air. Hmm. <laughs> um, I have known Penny a long time. Um, she is a sister. I mean, she's Jewish and I'm Italian, but we're sisters. <laughs> um, and we're like, we see Lyris are like sisters. Um, we'll talk about Goddess Camp later. But um, her mom, Beanie, uh, is also part of Goddess Camp and her dad. She's classic. Classic. Uh, and, um, and they're from Montreal. Vicious. And, um, and I, and immediately sort of there, they became my like pseudo kind of guardian parents here, um, just because they're just wonderful people. And um, Penny is Penny, and then Penny has Peter, and then they, and then Penny has a daughter, and we all know each other. But my point is, um, Penny and Penny's the Penny's the friend where if there's something serious going on, we are not to sit together ever, ever, <laughs> ever. Oh. We revert, like to, we revert to 12 years yes. old and <laughs> and it doesn't matter and we get in trouble with beanie her mom all the time so um but you know penny now lives in la jolla i mean besides the goddess which philosophy which will will take you down um at some point in this conversation um because penny is a speech certified speech language pathologist um, she has a practice, a private practice in La Jolla, which is a beautiful place. Um, 36 years she's been doing it. I know we all look so youthful. Ridiculous, yeah. Ridiculous. Um, she's done conferences, workshops, and, and you know, she'll tell, if people don't know what it is, I'll allow the expert to talk about it. I could read it from the list, but why bother? She can just explain. But, you know, she's an innovator in this field as well. Um, she is the co-producer of taught a doodle do and that's an educational dvd for improving children's communication and cognitive skills cool. um, she also wrote and produced a children's cd called hop and bop cool. and the author of a children's book called say it penny <laughs> i was gonna see if you could do it <laughs> yeah, wait. So that's called tapuchim and devash yeah, exactly. I was going yeah. to say that. Yeah, I got the. I'm not that right. Jewish. I just know when you're talking <laughs> like Jewish Yiddish. It's like the. Are you gonna? I don't know where to put that in. I don't know where to put that in. I don't know where to put that in, and I didn't want to unfit it in properly and sound like a jerk. Um, <laughs> and that's a story about communication and acceptance. Um, you know, so you know what I find wonderful about Penny is you know she has the practice, but yet. She's found creative and artistic ways to sort of get the message across um, for that. And, 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 you know, what you all don't know, I mean, we, I do, a few of you, you who, who are tuning in, you know, Penny is also a vocalist and singer. And mm -hmm. she has written an inspiration, she's been writing for years, at least as long as I've known her, some inspirational songs. It's all about inspiration. It all falls into that whole, you know, goddess spiritual groundedness center women empowering women philosophy um that we all should really strive for so um her new cd she has a new cd coming out in 2022 called living the dream if i can finish last night she's got oh, one more song to finish she'll do it please um it's coming out you've got she's she's got like almost a year so yeah of course she'll <laughs> Um, and what haven't you, what haven't you completed that you've started? You know, you haven't, and it's always been very successful and I'm looking forward to that. So before we start, um, her talking, I, the first song, and I've heard Penny sing covers and stuff and, and she's got that guitar thing and it's great, but the one song that she came up with, and we all did a video, we were all part of a video. It's called Attitude of Gratitude. Mm. And that has sort of been the theme song for for us as yeah. part of our community. So um, I'd like to start the show off with um, with this song, um, sort of wish us luck and and just sort of start the platform. So uh, Christian, would you or do you have that queued up? Attitude of gratitude. Yes, we do. Christian. Watch, you went to a bathroom break. No, this right here. Hello? <laughs> no, we got that queued up, ready to go. All right, we'll start with Attitude of Gratitude by Penny Cohen. Sweet. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. 
It's an attitude of gratitude. It's the way I want to be. It's an attitude of gratitude. And it's here, right inside of me. down the street one day I was feeling sad and sort of blue and I thought about the people that are in my life and the love came shining through that's right it's an attitude of gratitude it's the way I want I want to live it's an attitude of gratitude you gotta learn to receive you truly give. <laughs> well, everybody needs a little time alone to think and meditate. When you find that open door and then you step right through, you'll be amazed at what you can create. That is funny. It's an attitude, it's an attitude it's of gratitude. Of gratitude, of gratitude, and it's here, right inside of me. Well, judgment and criticism block the flow, they only cause negativity. When you find the beauty of the person deep inside, you can move to positivity. That's right. Attitude. Of gratitude, of gratitude, of gratitude. Where I want, I want to live. Attitude, of gratitude, of gratitude. You gotta learn to receive before you truly give. Well, it's an attitude, of gratitude. Inside of me, right inside of me, inside of me. I love that song. Okay, first of all, to have Durga McBroom sing my song, <laughs> I just say, I love when Durga came in in the background. Oh that my was. god. <laughs> Check that off my bucket list. Yeah. Wow. What a lovely song. I love that. I you. love it. It's, it you. reminds me of Begin the Fever, but oh, yeah, yeah. in a different way. Yeah. Yeah, a little of that. I think it's the first time I ever met Penny. Was at a party. She arrived with her guitar, with all this fabulous hair and this <laughs> smile. She was just too fucking gorgeous for words. <laughs> and then she picked it up and she played. And I think <clears> that's the first time I ever met all that group and everyone was singing along yeah that was nice yeah, yeah. i love that song it's catchy too thank you yeah, the, video so cool. the video that we have with gay Ann singing too i mean with all of us at my 50th birthday yeah. was like oh too bad you don't have that do you i have you could check it out on facebook on, i mean on youtube <laughs> Hold so, on. Yeah, we won't play the song again, but it's on YouTube. I should have played the video instead because it was. Yeah, different. that's what I was thinking. Yeah, um, I didn't but, think. But, oh, but, but the thing is, um, so Penny, so obviously we get we'll get to the song. How did you you were from Montreal? Yep. Um, came to California when you were younger with your parents. Uh, I actually know. I followed my parents out here. I finished uh, university back in Montreal. Okay. And then my parents had moved here and I moved out after them. Got it. And you were young, um, right? 21, yeah, 20? 22. Okay. Yeah. And then, so, um, so you got your degree up in Canada or is that like what you knew you wanted to do? And why did you choose that career? Yeah, I knew I wanted to be a speech pathologist. I knew I wanted to be able to work with lots of different populations of people and also to be able to use all of the creative stuff. 
So mm-hmm. I like to do arts and crafts and I like to sing and I like to do play drama games. and play games. And this allowed me the opportunity to, to do whatever I wanted to help kids communicate better and adults, but mostly kids. <laughs> That's pretty much where I like to be. So yeah, and, and my mom had, my mom had to have speech therapy because she had vocal nodules, which uh, if anybody knows my mom, <laughs> for her not to be able to talk for even a what, a minute? Yes. Yeah, anyway. So she had to be really quiet and I got to really watch the process and, and it fascinated me. And then I just followed on and I did my master's in San Diego at got San Diego State. So that's where I actually became a speech therapist. But yeah. you come from a musically inclined mother. Yes, very much. Yeah. She is kooky as fuck. She's terrific. Yeah, right. and adorable <laughs> as well. Yes. I mean, and, and she's the one who, you know, those pictures, like, what are you going to be when you get older? Like, which, yeah. which woman? And you click on the most outrageous person <clears throat> with the whole, like, you know, like, I can't even tell you what, what Beanie wears. It, it, it's priceless, priceless. Um, but, you know, but she's also, she had a music school, right? She had a drama school. Drama school. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we put on musicals and yeah. So yeah, I had a lot of support in that area and a lot of, um, yeah, I mean, I got a lot of talent from my mom, definitely. Yeah, but it's also kind of a legacy because it's your mom, you, and your daughter, Shireen, who also is okay. obviously, you know, has another career, but she also is musically inclined as well. It's it's yeah. very cool to see the three of you anywhere performing. It's a, always a treat and a joy. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, it it's fun. Angel. Yeah, yeah it was when we actually voice. did a three-woman uh, show. Mm-hmm. We did a three-generational show when um, oh. Shireen was like eight. And uh, and that was beautiful. We honored my grandmother and it was a story about her and my mother wrote the whole thing and we performed it, the three of us. So it was really, yeah, I have a lot of really good juju in my, yeah. Absolutely. My so the thing is, I mean, I know obviously when I met you, I mean, you'd always have guitar in hand, but you'd like, you'd sing, I, when I remember like you'd sing a lot of just like cover songs when we first met, you would just pull it out and sing cover songs. And I think probably the first one, turn it around the other way. The first, the first song that actually, I think I virtually heard you uh, like put together was Attitude of Gratitude. And, um, and then, you know, I know you'd probably, so like, why, why, why put together these inspirational songs? Why not do rock and roll? Why not do Broadway tunes? why this type of genre of music it's what it's just what comes to me it's what comes to me and attitude of gratitude came to me i was walking on the beach it came it just came in and as a full song and i thought you know what and the next morning i was able to recreate it and you know when you can recreate it yeah Mm -hmm. right that it's meant to be right wow yes so that's when it was just and it was actually i did it all i couldn't play guitar on it actually which is interesting because for the first time, it is not a guitar song. So it's the first time I've ever written a song without my guitar. Hmm. And I said, I, I don't, I can't, I can. And I sang it to my husband and he said, oh, I hear a whole symphony behind you. And I said, that's funny. Cause I hear bongo drums and, a <laughs> and that's it. And I, and that was what I heard. And then our amazing Elliot Anders, you know, he's uh, just an incredible uh, person in our community. And he heard it and said, we, we're recording this. We're just, we need to record this. And we, it was pretty quick. It happened really quickly. And each verse kind of had a little bit to do with what was ever was going on in my life at the time. And, you know, so it was just perfect. And, gra- and I just started with um, goddess camps and it, that really brought up a lot for me of, you know, all the spiritual, all the spiritual stuff that we talk about and meaningful, meaningful, deep conversations. You know what? I was talking to a friend yesterday and I do these, you guys know me, I do these hypotheticals. What if, what if, and she's <laughs> looking at me and she's like, you know, you, you stop with the what ifs. I don't understand the what ifs. You, you get me worked up. It's so, and I said, but I mean, like I said, you're kind of shallow. I said, seriously, I said something that's philosophical, esoteric and spiritual. Like that's, that's like fun for me fun conversations and these hypotheticals and she said no I find it very boring wow 
Wow. All right. Well, you're not going to be a goddess anytime soon. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> laughs. But I mean, it's like, but I mean, I, you know, and it is a certain, it is a certain, I mean, you know, I, I meet people and there's a certain connection with certain people, but I have to say that the, the, the ones that are rooted in spirituality, but not like, we're not talking Christian. We're just talking. No, not religious. Not religious right. no at relig all. At all. But it's important for me, that's growth, uh, going on a journey and having people with you and support you. And, and you don't only want that either, but you want people to call you on your shit too. Like the one line from the song, you, 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 you have to, to, you know, you have to learn to receive, you know, and that was, that is a thread in my life. And, and it was brought up, for example, with goddess camp. I have, a, I, I mean, I'm better now, but I had a hard time receiving. Oh yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people have a hard time receiving. Yeah. And I don't much, understand yeah. why. Why, Cheryl? Why do you think that? <laughs> I think it's just we, it feels good to give. I think people are just natural givers in some way. And, uh, and, and really, maybe they feel they don't deserve it, too. Or they don't realize that receiving is giving. You know, maybe we need a little, little better That's perspective. giving someone else the gift. It's giving someone else the gift yes. of giving to you. Yes. That's yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. In my in my experience with that, um, it's been people that have been really closed off that they have like closed themselves off because they've been hurt so much in the past that when someone actually wants to do something nice to them, they just they can't um, be open to receive it, mm -hmm. or they've been hurt, or they're just insecure in some way where they yeah. they just can't be open to receive it, and it just it's really sad. Like I've been working with somebody um for about a month now who's been completely closed off to me and just this week she opened up and I can just see her energy and her smile and just just the loveliness about her she's she's glowing now and she's just she's been doing a lot of inner work and healing and it just it's just so wonderful to, to see that but everyone deserves to to feel that I really do find that most people uh, have who have difficulty receiving, it's because they have set themselves up so much to be a pleaser and take care of everybody else. And sometimes, you know, we have this conversation with ourselves that I don't need anything. I'm okay. Because either that means that you're weak or underneath that somebody once told you to stop asking for things because it mean, meant you were needy and you don't want to seem needy. Um, but mostly I think also yeah, it is people, a lot of people just don't feel like they deserve to be given to and well, it's an amazing gift. It's an amazing thing to surrender and allow yourself to be loved like that. As long as it's the kind of giving that doesn't have any strings attached that, you know, is just pure giving and it's not, somebody's going to expect something back from you. Um, wow. that would never even, that never even occurred to me in this conversation. That's interesting. Well, my mind started wandering towards sex, and so I started thinking <laughs> about the times that I've gone out with girls, and they've given me, like, they've paid for dinner, and then, you know, hi, I have to give out thanks to them in other ways, or I, that's expected. I didn't, but. Yeah, but then the thing I, is, from the giver's perspective, because I've be I mean, I'm learning to become a receiver and understanding now, you know, that it, you are giving back a gift. Allow someone to do something for you. If you constantly do for that person, then it becomes, you know, they feel, you know, they feel sort of uncomfortable with it. So yeah. allow them to give it to you or people can misrepresent it. Like, oh, you've got your head so far up this person's ass. And, you know, or something like that. Um, one of the, first of all, people call in 323-524-2599. On the Facebook page, Laura Iris. Hi, Laura. Um, she said, I wonder what the giver wants in return, or it will be used as an emotional weapon. Like, you so, owe me because I gave you. Well, let's see, that's the dark side of the giving thing. But mostly yeah. pure giving doesn't include, obviously, pure giving doesn't have those strings attached. And yeah. we're you guys, I'm assuming you were talking about the pure giving from the heart. Right. And yeah. how some people can't accept it because, like, here are the reasons that you mentioned. Um, so, I mean, I happen to bring up the dark side of it 
which was the whole, okay, what are you wanting back from me? Which is trust issues. Correct. Also, and all, you're talking about it as, as, in a, as a form of manipulation. Yeah. And, and, and yes, and of course, the song's talking about it from completely from the heart, but you're so right, because it's, everything's got yeah. a black and a white. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I, I'm sorry, I think if you want to give me something, I'm going to accept it. If you on your side of this, this equation have like ulterior motives or something, that's on you. Right. And yeah. then if, like hint to me something, oh, well, I gave you this. I'll be like, yes, you gave me that. And yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> and like speaking on the opposite side, I am the giver. So I'm just, I'm used to giving. I'm a very open, warm and loving and accepting person. And that's just, that, that makes me happy. It makes me happy seeing other people happy. Mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. I mean, we should you know, count. <laughs> I know we're all givers. Yes. Yes, yes, but I also like presents. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> yes. I do too. Um, but I say, I mean, I tend to, you know, the thing is, it's like, you know, when people say, and it's that negative thing because they feel uncomfortable because you give if it's presents. I mean, you know, like if I like you guys all know me when I hang up the phone, I always say I love you. It doesn't mean I like want to fuck you. It means I love you. Yes, and it, it does. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just kidding. It's like, but for me, that's like that's like you know, like I I just say that you know, or you know, or I I want to hug. I'm very I want to hug hello and I want to hug goodbye and. And, you know, and, and like I said, there are people that I know that are like, that's weird that you always hang up and say, I love you. I'm like, okay. I mean, I'm not saying like, I love you. You know, here's the ring. I, I don't understand. And I thought, you know, it, it, I felt like, why are you making me feel bad for kind of spreading the love? It's not, and I was like, like, you're trying to change me. And I thought, you know what? It's not about me. Oh, that's nope. their issue. That's their issue. So my question okay. is, here's my question though. I do have a question. If this is who I am and that's who they are and they say it makes them feel uncomfortable if I do it, yet it's who I am. Do I stop doing it because it makes yes. them feel uncomfortable? Yes, you do. All right. You do. Because your intention in saying I love you is to love them. And that, that what they're saying to you is if you love me, you'll recognize that this makes me uncomfortable. Right. Ah, yes, now, I look at it the other way around. Because when I first met this group, and Penny obviously wasn't playing a guitar at all, so I made that <laughs> Um, But um, there were a lot of long, lingering hugs and lots of I love yous, and I did not feel comfortable with it. I was not used to it, and it wasn't my language. But mm. over time, and it took a few years probably to get really relaxed into it, it was amazing to be able to accept it and to really fall into a hug and say I love you to some... It, so there is that, but in that order, to, but it. that you had to do that in order to be with our group, like Gayanne's doing it with a, just a, you know, somebody right. well, that that's she's speaking true. with. Even so, so you know, yeah. I mean, I can see, way, yes, right? you're showing them a different way to. But be. I do agree with the. But I do agree with Durgan that you know, just to respect how the other person right well, wants to receive it, and it's not going to be received the way you're saying it. Mm -hmm. They right, so yeah, Basically, you can't it. force love on people. Right, it's. You know, and then it's up to them whether they, yeah. And like, love. You want it in. You want it in. You have to get used to our hugs. Yeah, I had to just, I had to just learn a <laughs> fuckload at the beginning. Yes. But love can take many forms. This is. You can love someone by letting them be exactly how they are. Yeah. And that's, that's how they it. are is that makes them uncomfortable. Then mm -hmm. you show them that you love them in different ways. You don't have to say, I love you to somebody to show them that you love them. You can love them in a lot of different ways that has has the love land over there in a way that they're receptive for it. Now, I mean, in a goddess group or whatever, yeah, that's a totally different con mm -hmm. context. You're putting yourself into the situation in this group in order to expand. You've made that choice, even though you know you're going to run into things that make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You've chosen to do that. But um, in just a conversation with somebody, if and you know what? If somebody doesn't like it, if I say I love you, then fuck them. I don't want to say it to them. They kiss my ass. A lot of other people love it when I say it. So fuck them. <laughs> you know, I think it's really important, like what Durga just mentioned. It's really important to like be surrounded by the people that are going to be open to lo your love and open to receiving your love. 
uh, like Gay Ann, it's like, you know, we have a lot of love to give. And I'm so blessed to have nothing but wonderful friends in my life. When, when we see each other, we give each other big hugs and we just say, I love you. And we just, we feel the love. We have that connection. And I just really realized this year going through so many deaths this year and so many sick family members that um, that's the only thing that matters, you know? What is it, it that your, vi- your, tri- what, your tribe finds your vibe or your vibe finds your tribe? Yeah, the, the, yeah like exactly. That. And it just, it, mm-hmm. it just, it, and I love it because look at all of us here. Like, look at our faces, look at our energy. It's just, mm-hmm. it's, just it's love, it's connection. It's open and it's authentic and it's genuine. And that's why we're all here. And yeah. be surrounded by people like that in, in your regular life. If you're not surrounded by people like that in your regular life, go find them and go get a new yeah. set of things. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, even like, what's his name? Gary, I forgot his last name. The like the five, what is it? Five languages of love. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, that's a community. It's sort of like there, you know, there's probably more, but he said five, but I mean, I think if you, and you know, I, I try to like read the book many times and I try to apply it to be more aware of people. So I know what they are and it's like, okay, this is this person's language of love. It's not my language of love, but, and it's not like what I would do, but it's, but I know what it is. So I will try and speak to them or, or react to them in their language. And, you know, and sometimes like if people don't get it, you're giving them, you're understanding them doing it. And then they have, they're not really like giving it to you in return because they're not taking the time. Even if you tell them, this is what my language of love is. We won't argue. We won't do this if we would just communicate. And communication is much more. Communication is so subliminal. It's much yeah. more than saying the proper words and how you say it it's body language, it's mm. everything. And, and that's why I hate when people go, you know, you don't know how to communicate. As a matter of fact, fucker, I am actually the only one communicating on so many other levels. Why are you so goddamn one dimensional? <laughs> you know why? I will, I, I, I'm gonna be open and honest. I, I made Jared to laugh, that was a long time. <laughs> you know, so not scary. everyone communicates. Like it, it depends, the five love languages are great you will also have to look at the attachment styles right so i'm a secure attachment and the person that i was dating off and on for five months at the end of last year was an avoidance and so it's like wow it's anytime it came to communication i'm like i want to talk and the other person would just avoid i'm like okay this is so does not work with me so it's really learning the attachment styles and that's why we were on and off and on and off relationships are horrible but it also but you know what but it's not only like when i talk about relationships when i say the word relationships you know i don't always mean romantic you know my friendships are a relationship my partner i don't have one right now looking but i don't have one um so, you know <laughs> to e brad on instagram um i everything to me because i deal with it on that level emotional i'm an emotional person so every person i meet that i give of my time and want to spend for me i internalize it it's an emotional bond and it's an emotional journey it's an emotional attachment so whether it's a business relationship or a you know um a friendship they're all to me relationships and the relationships have one, it's like one baseline. And then depending on what the relationship is, then obviously, you know, you attract it differently. Like I, I mean, look, I work in the entertainment business. So, you know, if I've worked with actors or I've worked with people over years and we've known each other, I will sit there and go when I say hello, oh my God, I've missed you. I love you. You know, maybe not to someone I don't know, or they, they think what's this fucking weirdo doing, you know what I mean? But for the most part, you know, you know, people really, you know, you have to sort of let your guard down, you know, trust. And I think Mara brought it up. Trust. Um, trust is so important. And, you know, and I'm that kind of person where even if, and I, I'm trying to be stronger with this because I set myself up, you know, if someone I hate to use the word betray because it's such a dramatic word, but if someone like sort of you lose trust in someone, 
you know, I'm the person that I make excuses. Well, because of this or because of that. And it's perpetual and the red flags continue. You know, and I don't know why I'm so Pollyanna where I always try and see the good in people. But sometimes people are just fucked. They're mm -hmm. just not good people. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, I'm trying to, you know, and then, you know, then what do you do? What does an emotional person do when they've been hurt? First thing they do. Anybody? Anybody? Last shot. Shut down. Okay, you're a sick bitch, Mara. You lash out. I shut down. I shut down. Mm -hmm. I I shut down. <laughs> and then the wall comes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then yeah. not only is it to that person, but it then becomes everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know why? Is because we're so open and loving, and for someone to be mean to us, it's it hurts so deep and so bad as an empath that yeah. we just completely shut down to the world. Like I will this extrovert that I am, I will completely shut down and lock myself up and not leave my house other than to go to work and come back home until I like emotionally repair myself. Granted, it doesn't take longer than a week. Mm -hmm. And, and then I come back out and I reach out to like my closest friends, my safe people. And then right. I start coming back out, you know, people are complicated. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's wonderful, Gayan, that you look for the pot that the good for the good in people. I do the same. I know you do. That's why we're sisters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, but I, and I think it's also good. Good though, just when you see the other side, to not brush it aside. It doesn't mean they're bad people. It just means that there's something that's not working for you. And mm -hmm. even though you may like this certain something specifically about them, if the other stuff outweighs it, then it's like, eh, you got to. Not really my tribe. Yeah, it's not it. Yeah. So next. Well, speaking you know, of next, <laughs> if you want to have, you have a thought on this, Durga? Yeah. Um, the, the former producer of uh, Between the Sheets, Sammy Phillips, is one of those people that always ends a call with, I love you. And her scratchy, although not so scratchy, she had throat surgery. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But she's always like, okay, bye. I love you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sounds like, but, but you know what? She has a saying that rejection is God's protection. So when somebody hurts you and fucks with you, it, that means it's it's God's way of getting them out of your life. So you don't get hurt anymore. Nice. Yeah. Like, I mean, good. yeah no, absolutely. I I I miss Sammy. Um, but you know, I'm gonna play another song. Um, lighten up would be the next one. Before we go into the song, why don't you tell us how that came about and what the what, what the inspiration for that song was? I was in a dark place. <laughs> and I don't usually I don't usually get in a dark place. It, it was, was a dark attic. place in my life. It was the attic. Um, and uh, anyway, this again, it it came in and uh, lighten up was the phrase that the woman who um, started our goddess group, Joy Lisker. Uh, she used to say that all the time. You know, she would say some other things like, you know, love, laugh, listen, and for God's sakes, lighten up. And so, but what I wanted to also say about this, so this is the first like rock type song that, I wrote, that I've written. And Kara did all the backups. So she's my backup vocalist on this song. So nice. that's okay. and, then, yeah. and then I've got a friend who also jumped in and said, can I do the guitar riff? And I'm like, sure. So this is a real compilation. I, I feel so grateful. Like four different people came together to help this come together. So yeah. And then Elliot redid it because in his brilliant way, made it into like a dance mix. <laughs> so let's hear Lighten Up by Penny Cohen. <laughs> There's always there a, video. a video. Head is pounding all around the sounds are sounding can't ignore the voices in my head lips are moving sounds are slurring words are spoken faces blurring fighting urges to curl up in bed lighten up lighten up why do you worry and stress that your life is a mess lighten up lighten up why do you struggle each day No, 
knowing I have all the power. Open up and feel the pleasure rise. Salty, spicy, what's your pleasure? Sucking on a newfound treasure. To surrender, you receive the prize. Lighten up, lighten up. Why do you worry and stress that your life is a mess? Lighten up, lighten up. Why work so hard every day if you don't go out and play? Are you willing to try? Are you willing to cry? Feel the fear and the pain, then start over again. Oh, the past is the past. Though some feelings might last, be present is now. You know the future is now. Freezes veins and leaves us blanker. Moving to a song that is not ours. Clasping, grasping, wrapped in fears. This legacy brings many tears. It's time to break away and feel empowered. Lighten up, lighten up. Why do you worry and stress that your life is a mess? Lighten up, lighten up. Don't need to struggle each day. Why don't you? Your cars, she did like a car. Yeah, yeah she, cars background vocal, very distinctive. Um, <laughs> you know, isn't that a fun song? Yeah. Awesome. yeah. So why do you think people can't lighten up? I mean, it's really easy to say. I mean, you know, some guys, someone's got an attitude, someone's got an issue, you go, oh, lighten up. Do you remember times I've said lighten up or just chill out? And I don't get the reaction that I thought I'm going to get. <laughs> people know. are like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Really? We, know how, we know how to lighten up, Gayanne. I mean, we've taken some serious, like you said, we should never be sitting next to each other during serious times. No. You, you are my goddess brat friend. That <laughs> is what I love about you. Cutie brat, you are such a brat, and we are such brats together. And that's what I love about you. Uh, I love you for a lot of reasons, too. I mean, I seriously, like one time we had a camp at, 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 was it Penny's mom's house? It was at Beanie's house. And everybody like it's a sleepover so everyone all these little women and you know they're not and I, i'm like the token lesbian <laughs> like two of us um and it was like late and I'm, penny and i first of all we sit next to each other in camp and we have these processes of growth and and she's sitting next to me and we're or she's across the room and we're looking at each other and we're laughing in the most inappropriate times we get brandished and, and people get upset with us and sort of put us in our own corners yeah. And then recommended, yes. Totally. And then and then people go to sleep, except me and Penny. And we were at her mom's house one one camp. And I said, she's like, she goes, get ice cream? I don't know. So we like went to raid her mother's refrigerator, freezer, and we found ice cream. And we had to crawl over bodies because there's a lot of women here. So like people are sleeping on the floor on the ground, and we're trying not to step on people's hair and shit. And we I think we got the ice cream. And then like two seconds later like like a heat-seeking missile her mom was like right there like a, 
because her mother can never let us have alone time either okay <laughs> ever and um and she like joined in the thing then we were making a lot of noise and all these people were like getting very upset because we were laughing then we got then we all slept in the same bedroom yeah. um and then and then penny and i got the giggle it's yeah 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 we i yeah. mean we lighten up i mean i like look even if i guess my my breaking the ice mm -hmm. even if things are tense or there's an argument or just really something horrible happening i always fall upon humor yeah. and and it's like it could be i could be having an argument or whatever and then i will just say something out of the ordinary which will break up the tension and then usually most people move on you know they it's like okay take a breath and you move on and you can usually get past what that is yes mara um, I think that being someone who can laugh at themselves, because I always laugh at myself, I crack myself up in the most embarrassing situations. I'm like the first person to laugh because I don't take myself that seriously. But there are some people that find it very hard because they, they have this complex about looking stupid. You know, they don't want to look dumb. They don't want to look like they're incompetent, whatever. Usually people that are type A personalities you know, go through this a lot that, um, but I'm a type A. Well, you're different then, but some people, because of that phrase lighten up, it's because they don't, I think a lot, not all of them, but like some people I know that have this problem is because they just, uh, they take self-criticism and mess ups and mistakes too hard. They take it to heart. I don't know. So, I, 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 I could see that. I could see people taking it to heart um, the criticisms, um, and they're, they're just, cause I think what it is, is we, we have learned as a society to ignore our feelings and just suck it all up yep. and continue to move on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's one thing that I learned during COVID is, is shadow work. Mm -hmm. It's, um, the shadow work is really everything. Why don't you explain, hey, hey, um, Roxanne, explain what that is a very brief yeah. So sh shadow work is, is when say, for example, we're at work or we're in front of people and someone says something or does something or we see something where it brings up feelings, uh, either anger or emotions or sensitivity or sadness, but because we're in front of people, we have to shove those feelings down and we just shove them down so much all the time. that sometimes we're emotional and we don't even know why we're emotional, but it's all those years and all those times of us shoving our feelings down and not allowing it to come out and working on them and just sitting with your feelings and because of that it's a lot of people aren't realizing i think they're not conscious as to the reason why they're so serious and it's true like what mara said it's it's people don't want to look silly in front of other people because we have learned to value what people think of us more than what we value our, our thoughts of ourselves. And it's just so sad. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, I tell my friends, I could care less what anyone thinks about me because I really do. And I'll never lose sleep and I won't even think about it for a minute That's because great. I know myself, I love myself and I accept myself. I know I'm an amazing, beautiful person, whether, I, and, and I have nothing to prove to anybody so if someone loves me, they do. If they don't, they don't. Great. It's all good. Love and it. that's just, we just have to work and just sit and be with our feelings. Because if we just work and sat and just with our feelings when they can't come up or afterwards when we're alone, we would be much happier as a society. Hmm. Mm. Cheryl, you've been pretty quiet. How I know you it? nodding. I know you're <laughs> nodding. So I know well, you're in agreement, but why wouldn't you be? But I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's like a getting to know yourself, you know, and through meditation or getting to know your own energy or turning off the TV and the remote and the phone and the what have you. And maybe just like Roxanne was saying, learning about how to listen to your own feelings, you know, how to listen to yourself and with all these empaths opening up. With 2020, we're all opening up. I mean, that's a very good thing. We're all heightening our sensitivities. So, 
And we want to nurture that. And, you know, we are finding that men are becoming more sensitive, that they're bringing out that female side of them, right? So we want to nurture that too. So we can be happier, right? And we should lighten up. We should lighten up and play more. I think, I also think some people grew up so fast, maybe that also, they yes, didn't, that's a good they didn't play a lot, you know, and we can play as adults, right? We yes. Still have fun. Yeah, we, there's a lot of play. We have a caller. Let's, let's, oh, let's play with the caller. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Between the Sheets. Who's calling? Hello. 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 Sounded like they just slammed the back door and went to the pub. <laughs> oh, well, well, if they call back, I have no idea. Tony, if, I mean, uh, Christian, if they're there, are they there? It says they're there, but I don't think they're coming through. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, hang up. Maybe they'll call back. I don't know what else to do because dead air sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think you're right. I think, you know, some people, you know, don't didn't have the thing to play but you know i guess when it's like when you get older i think people some people think well if you know i have to be more responsible or i have to you know yeah. show this side of me no i mean you know i don't i don't like but then again i don't get it and guess what those are not my kind of people right? so, mm -hmm. i you think know? it's really important and this is something that um you know from covid and everything i've gone through this year is what i'm really realizing um, as we get older, I don't think we're taking ourselves with us because we're shoving so many emotions down that I'm realizing this year that I have to get to know me. I feel like I don't know who I am anymore. Mm -hmm. And not like in every sense and that I'm lost because I'm not. But it's like, what do I really want? What am I really looking for in a partner? What really makes me happy? Because I just turned another year older last month oh. and every oh, thing on hold, she says, but every, everyone is just on, um, every year we grow and evolve and we have to get to know ourselves. I think all over again, every single year, how many times do we put the effort in to know us? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing that Roxanne here, I said, Roxanne, um, it's i think a lot of people you know we don't i think some people and i've done this you put i put others first a lot right. okay you know i know everything about people and then i realize you know like i've shared about me but it's like but they like like i don't know i'm that kind of person where if you say oh that's my favorite perfume uh, just example you know and your birthday comes around a year later guess what you'll get that perfume and like how did you know that you fucking told me. I mean, seriously, you told me. And right. then, it, oh, I don't know what to get. I didn't know what to get you. I have been telling you clues for the past year. Why are you freaking? I mean, why am I such an active listener and pay attention to detail? You well, know? Okay, here, worse than that. Sorry. Yeah, here's the thing. I think it just goes back to some of us were raised in an environment where we had to learn to be the rescuers. We had to uh, be the caretakers. <laughs> And we had to be the givers. And, right. and because I have given so much of myself in my entire life, I'm, I'm at just at the point where I'm, I'm going to get to know me and I'm going to take care of me. I'm going to rescue me. I'm going to give to me. Well, and the adage I'm, that says you have to love yourself first before you can love anybody else. And I, I, I'm going to actually date myself first. Now. Well, you all you have sex with yourself, so you might as well do the dating process <laughs> and just get to know myself and just love myself. And I don't even the last thing that's even on my mind this year is dating. I haven't dated one person, and I don't want to. Cool. All right, hold on, wait, 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 hold on, wait. Sorry. Hold on. Do we? Hey, Tony. Shauna said she called. She's Shauna Rama. Um, did she, is she back on? Um, Christian. Yes, she is. All right, let's Hi, start this again. Shauna. Hey. Shauna, you there? Uh, I believe there's the first person in queue is named, his name's Eddie. Oh, hold on. Eddie. Eddie? He should Eddie, come Eddie? Eddie. <laughs> Eddie? Eddie? All right, why don't we, how can we try the second person in queue? They say, Shauna says she can hear us. 
One Hello? Yeah, one second. Let me get a hold of a IT professional. Okay. Hey. Stand by, everybody. Durga, what were you saying? You, you've been dating? I was going to say, I've been dating my Hitachi Mansion watch for the last year. And now. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. No, actually, no. Listen, my friend turned me on to one when I was 18, okay? Uh, uh, or thereabouts, because we were college roommates. And I had one, my first one, I kid you not, for 18 years. That bitch lasted for 18 years, and it was so sad. One day, I remember I was getting ready, settling in for a nice little, you know, whatever. And uh, I turned it on, and it was so sad. It just like went, and this little puff <laughs> came out. And I was, I had a service for my Hitachi Magic Wand. Because Aww. I had been so close to it for longer than most of my friends at that point in my life. 18 <laughs> years is a long time. So where I said birds and, you know. All where that. did you bury it? In your, in your <laughs> underwear? No, I, I buried it in a bag in the garbage. But uh, I bought a new one, so. Like a dog. Uh, like a, like a dog. I don't no, think. I don't no, think. No, you know what? I'm like a dog. I don't, I don't think yeah. they make them anymore. <laughs> yes, they do. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> yeah. I, I, had several since then. I have one hey, now. Happy Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kayan, are you listening? I, hey, I look, I have had my I had one for a very long time. And then it did the same poof and gone. And then I purchased another. And then um and then I and then I went to visit someone up north and they didn't have one. I didn't want to bring it through like, you know, check on because I didn't want to do that. So we went to a went to us like a sex store and bought one. It was like a weird ripoff. It didn't even have the power. The okay. generic ones are yeah, terrible. The generic ones. <laughs> stupid. And then so now I've I mean and then I bought another one. So I've got one on a whole. I've got one still in the box just in case this one, you know, flies <laughs> on me. Wow. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you girls that something that's better than a Hitachi vibrator is you ha they have this the new ones now where one side is uh, sucking and the other side is a tongue clicking. Oh. oh. Well, I have the, the womanizer, wow. the sucking one, but the tongue clicking thing? Wow. Yeah, there's one that combines wait, both. Wait, 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 wait. One. Wait, there's a, a tongue licking one on one side and what's on the other side? So Suck. on one side, it's a, a, a sucking, um, a suction. And then the other side of it, they, it's a tongue flicking one. So, wow. so you do have to buy two because they do randomly break like a little after a month. <laughs> well, that's nice. You always need to have one in reserve. Can you get a warranty yeah. for the wear and tear? <laughs> no. You should. <laughs> but, uh, but let me tell you, that's better than any Hitachi vibrator ever. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I had a friend tell me about the womanizer. So I bought one and it was hella expensive back then and it's like an oval shaped like that and then there's a little round thing on the top that has a well in it and it you basically put it over your clitoris and it creates a suction and vibrates at the same time and i like it but i i'm 58 i've i've been using a hitachi magic wand for 40 years now so i'm kind of and and nicole bought us these amazing vibrators that she loves and it's pretty cool but Hitachi's my go-to. I went to the pleasure chest. Amazing. I had gotten a girlfriend this a while back, a new girlfriend. Um, bought one to the pleasure spent we spent because we decided to split it in half. Hundreds, literally it was yeah. hundreds of dollars on these newfangled pieces of shit. Um <laughs> no, Hitachi. Come on, let's try the let's see. We may have a call caller. Call. They had to reboot. So I don't see the call thing. Okay. So is there anyone on hold, Christian? Uh, yeah, hello? Yeah. Hello? Hi. Hello, can you hear me? Hi. Yeah, yes. Hi, who's yeah. calling? Yeah, but this is Eddie from Southgate, California. Oh, Hi, hey, Eddie. Eddie. What's up? What's going on? Um, um, well, first of all, let me just let you know that um, I've been Roxana's friend for many years. You know, I won't say how many years. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you, she's inspirational. She keeps telling me this every single year. And, and I want to share this with you because it finally hit me. Like, like uh, finally, finally hit me to the point where I, I did something positive for myself. You have to give 
permission to yourself it, and realize that it's okay to give permission to yourself to do the things that you choose to do. You don't have to ask your mom, your dad, or, or, or your significant other, whoever they may be, your cousin, your, your, your boss, or nobody. Go to the mirror and say, yes, I want to do this. I want to give myself permission. And I think the problem is that a lot of people out there is always looking to explain themselves for their actions before they actually do the action. I can tell you, Roxana really taught me this quite a bit. And I haven't seen her in a, in, a, in a while, but the last time I saw her, I was 210 pounds. I'm happy to say I'm 179 pounds just wow. by wow. basically listening to her. You know, and, and she and she keeps telling me and she's like, Hey, let me let me slap you over the face really quick and let me tell you, <laughs> do what you wanna do. Give yourself permission. It's okay. You don't if just go to the mirror, you are great, you are important to yourself. And if anybody else has something to say, you could either accept what they say or not accept what they say, but they cannot dictate on the permission you ask yourself to do. And 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 it took me a while to figure that out. You know, so and, and Roxana told me every single year, she goes, you got to knock it off, man. You got to knock it off and just live life because life is so short, you know, and are you going to be worried about getting permission from somebody else to actually do the, something that you wanted to do for a very long time, you know? Yeah, it's not so I was listening to your people think. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Yeah. You know, like, like, like people will, the only reason why people think, uh, the reason why people will talk bad about you is because they're avoiding talking to themselves. So, so instead of them talking and criticizing themselves or whatever, what's wrong with them, they find the nearest person who's maybe a little bit successful or, or maybe so, or someone that's doing something that they want to do originally in the first place. You know, like I, I remember when I went to a trip to Japan one time, I, I put, Fifteen hundred dollars on Japan. I remember a lot of people say, "Oh, I'm irresponsible. Why are you doing that?" This is like ten years ago, by the way. You're responsible. Why are you doing this? And and why why are you spending so much money? That you know, how are you going to get money to pay for it? You know, it's like, why do I have to tell you? Ask me for permission. I'm 48 years old. Leave me alone. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. Go off. So, so I, you're making some good points here, and I'm glad you're bringing this out. Well, thank you, Eddie. Thank you for everything. I'm glad that you um, I'm glad that you called in and watched the show. And yes, we do love Roxanne. She has pearls of wisdom we, for all of us. So thank you so much. And congratulations on loving you and losing the weight and, and being on a different path of yourself. So thanks for calling, Eddie. Eddie, wait. Thank you. I got to uh, show you. Yeah. You can see me. I don't know if you can see. You can't I, I, see I, it. My, my tattoo I can't, says... I can't, yeah. It says zero fucks given. Ah, ah, there you go. There you yes. go. That's how I live. Yes. 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 Thank you. I really applaud okay. you. Eddie, yes. Eddie, I'm God, so you. proud of you. Thanks, I'm so Eddie. proud of everything that you've done. I'm so proud of, of you just doing all that. Good job. We have another caller. Thank you. Thanks, Eddie. Bye, Bye right. Eddie. Bye, Eddie. Okay, Bye, Eddie. now, Shauna. Shauna, Shauna, you're up. Hello, ladies. Hi, Am hi, I coming in hi, clear? How are you? Thanks for keep trying back and forth. I had a glitch with the system. They had to reboot the phone thingy. Oh, technology. A, a yeah. grand, right? Yeah. Always. Listen, you guys are wonderful. Everybody looks fabulous, by the way. I'm glad mm -hmm. I finally made it. It took me like a minute and a half to find this link, and we got to do something about that. Christian, you, you to tell get Tony. right to my question. <laughs> yes. Hey, it's good feedback, okay? Mm -hmm. To my question, because you guys covered a few subjects. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Tell us. Okay, great. I've got a little delay in my screen, so I really can't look at you guys or this will mess me up. But, um, you know, with this... Uh, new moon cycle, a lot of things ended. Like I, my phone broke, uh, you know, people were telling me their water heater broke. A lot of things are ending and things are beginning, right? So that was one, I, one thing I wanted to touch on, but you guys are moving so fast. Then we talked about, you know, that was one of the things that went tits up, okay? My battery operated boyfriend or girlfriend, wait a minute. 
Um, <laughs> so let's move forward, okay? Getting to the really first subject you guys talked about, and that's about love and happiness. And I was just talking about this on one of my, I've taken a 180 degree turn in my life in those last couple of years. I have a new business I've created and I'm on a social platform now. And I was just talking about this very thing about happiness. And it seems like we have been systematically programmed that happiness is no longer normal. And that why is it that we have lost such a grip on what happiness truly is because it ain't the dollars in the bank and it's not the fact that you know i mean i could give you a whole list but i know we're on time crunch here and i don't even want to bring up this past year's global circumstance because i really don't want to give that power i'm trying personally to eradicate that because i for one am one of the one of the thousands of people who cannot take the vaccine. So moving forward from there, okay? What has happened to our world that we have lost such a grip on what happiness is? We have been programmed to think it's normal to be depressed. It's normal to need to take a pill to fix something. It's normal to be mean. Well, it's so normal. That's that's a different It's no longer normal to be happy. Why is that? Shauna, I think that there's, um, hi, Shauna. I think that some of the things that, uh, of the reasoning is because we are bombarded with so many contrasting things thrown in our faces. Uh, there's so many distractions. You know, back when, when it was the 80s and we didn't have, um, or like the 70s, the 80s, we didn't have the internet. Um, I think we were probably more happy as a, a group as a whole because we weren't, um, forced to see things that were going on everywhere at every time everyone's grabbing for your attention we could go outside and play there wasn't appliances or there wasn't distractions like the cell phone that make people isolate and um you know what i mean i just think that um the internet is a huge reason why um people aren't happy um and secondly we've lost touch maybe a lot of us have lost touch with what really brings happiness because we're looking and searching for the physical outside of us stuff that we have been conditioned to think will make us happy and that's not always the case well let me just uh, quote have... a great man one of the greatest i'm sorry let me just quote a great man one of the greatest men our country has ever seen abraham lincoln mm -hmm. And he, to paraphrase him, people are as happy as they want to be. And True. with all this technology and all this internet capability, we should have the ability to change that in a heartbeat. But yet we're, we've taken this, I'm saying in general, we as a, as a society, not as a group of small women here that are absolutely positively divine women that I am looking at on this screen right here. Every one of you are divine feminine women that have embraced your life in such ways that should be commended and honored and that this internet access that we have is just a small little microcosm of it all. And we need to join together to, like Mar said, to dispose of and eradicate that kind of thinking. And this internet capability, this platform that we have, that all of you ladies have in your individual lives, and then as a group here on Between the Sheets, and then in your own circles and your own networks within your work areas, that um, it should be so easy to help I don't know. I'm going off, Gayan. Help me come back. Here's the I, thing. I can't. I, 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 hold on. Hold on one second. I just want to, Derek, I know you want to make point, I, and I, I, I get it. But the thing is, you know, all of us are on this call, and probably most of our listeners and viewers, we're all of the generation that we remember pre computer. Mm -hmm. So we remember yeah. what that felt like. This newer generation has no understanding of what play is, what play, what, they don't. 
everything has been on this internet. So, you know, we can sit here and lament and go the good old days, the good old days. But, you know, it, 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 but it, it, it's sad to me because this generation has completely lost interpersonal relationship, communication, um, a touch, feel. It's everything is through nothing. I mean, these these kids and, and Penny, I'm Penny sure your work. Yeah. I'm sure when you work, you see these kids that you know, kids that you were doing 10 years ago, 20 years ago, to kids now. Sensory they deprivation must, to they the must extreme, be yeah. Socially like like awkward, like, which maybe could contribute to some issues that they're having. What do you think, Penny? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm seeing that. There's just there's so much focus on the screen, on the screen, and all a lot of the all of them can talk about is games that they're playing on the screen, and they're not. They're, you're right. There's the lack of eye contact. There's a lack of face to face talking, um, and that communication. And you know that's such a good point, Gayanne, about like we can really relate to what was before. So we have that in our heads. We can be happy if we remember what it was like before and we can, and it's easier for us. But, but let's yeah, not mistake, true. let's not mistake who's teaching these kids how to stay behind the screen. True. It's those people of those generations. It's the Gen X, it's everyone else. They're, they would rather give the phone to their kid right. yes. than play with their kid. Right. And, and why? Because um, Shauna just said, People aren't happy anymore. Why aren't people happy anymore? Why are people taking a pill and and not and just not being happy, not going outside? Because that is what our government has done. Our government has now made it a societal norm. Whenever there is an issue, you take a pill because they're getting. I, I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. We're going to stop here because that's just I weird. To want, me. It's not anything. a governmental thing. Yeah, it turned into a societal norm. It isn't a governmental thing. The government isn't saying you have ADHD, you have depression, take a fucking pill. They're providing it and making it go through with the FDA approved. And thank God for that, because I take pills, I take Prozac, and they have saved my life. So, right. No, but Big Pharma is in their pockets. But, it doesn't, but Big Pharma needs to exist. Otherwise, you're going to have I'm not saying that. mental bullshit. Right. Big pharma. Look, we need medication for things, but we don't need medication if I'm sad one day and I need more energy one day. And we don't need medication for that. That's, That's what a societal norm well, thinking is. Going back, go, ladies, let's go back and look back 100, 200 years ago. Granted, the lifespan was shorter. Yeah. <laughs> I'm and that, trying and to. That they put women And that they put women in asylums because they had PMS every 30 uh, days. Yeah. However, and I agree that is medicine, modern medicine is important. It's a part of our global uh um, evolution, certainly, but and government, no, they've yeah, they've helped. But what has been doing the damage is that it's turned into an industry, and it's right. not a preventive wellness care program anymore. Right, yeah. and I, I Roxanne, think that's I think where that's the big where, mistake exactly. is. I think that's what Roxanne is sort of bringing home that it's not anymore yeah. about seriously the wellness or homeopathy or nature naturopathy or whatever it is that, that, that it's not about that it's about you know putting the big pharma it's, to say hey here's the band aid here's a band aid wait a I minute mean, should we all just I'm roll up a should we all I'm just roll up a fat this. one should we hold on Shana, hold on Sean let Durga I, I want to hear Durga hold on um so you know you were asking when did we learn you know stop being happy news flash from the beginning of history People have not been happy. They just hit it. The thing is, now we talk about it. Since the 60s and then the 70s and EST and self-help and all that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. with the one thing about the internet is now you could see your neighbor and smile and wave and they'd go in their house and drink the fifth, fifth of scotch and you would never know about it. Now they drink that fifth of scotch and they're on Facebook going, I can't believe my, you know, my job sucks and I hate my fucking life. And yes. now you've got a window into everybody's life. It's not that everybody's unhappy all of a sudden. 
I mean, oh my God, why do you think the women's movement happened? Because women were stuck in these horrible marriages that they hated and they couldn't leave because they couldn't even get a credit card in their own name. They couldn't get a, you know, a, a mortgage in their own name. And they needed a man to do it. And after a while, women are like, I'm miserable. I want a fucking divorce. I'm a lesbian. I want to be myself. So the women's movement happened because people had been living these lives of quiet desperation for centuries. We are gods with the wiring of monkeys. So we are always in this fight for evolution where our bigger, higher, greater self is fighting with our lizard brain that is living. That's in called patriarchal life. conditioning. And that too, <laughs> patriarchal conditioning all comes out of that lizard brain need to survive. And as soon as we can break free of our attachment to this and this not dying, then we'll be a lot happier because then there's nothing to be afraid of. But society isn't expected to be happy right now. We're expected no. to all be anxious all the time, worrying about and going into the fear. That's not that true. is what's going on this entire last year. That's You're bullshit. not supposed to run down the street with a smile on your face. People don't like it. Yeah, I kind of agree with no. Cara on that. I don't. I don't. It's a difference. There's a difference between being mindful and being responsible and running around like a chicken with your head cut off. And to right. say that people are encouraging that is bullshit. Sorry. If you listen to the news, number one, if you have the news on, um, that's a surefire way to be unhappy. I, I mean, I still listen to the news. I've gotten addicted to the news. And I mean, it's just, it's all bad. It's pretty much yeah. all like shooting hey. today, you know. Well, because you it's all what? a bunch of lies. It's all a bunch of lies. It depends on what station you listen to, you're getting their point of view. No, there's just nothing, the but there is not, but there's nothing neutral anymore about the media. No, no, never hey, happened. Here's the cool thing about the TV. If you don't like it, what you're seeing and it's making you upset, turn it the fuck exactly. off. Exactly. Right. That's exactly. right. And that's actually, you can apply that to anything in your life. Like I, I listen to a lot of uh, Abraham. Hicks and um, I've listened to them for years. And what one thing she says is that we need to practice more control over our thoughts yep. because every situation is, is a stick and there's the good side on one end and the bad side on the other. So the more you kind of train your brain to focus on like feeling good thoughts, it's hard. It's super hard to do that. But if you can take control of what you're focusing on and you want to focus on good things, and you, you just have to force yourself to find a better thought, you know? Because look, you know what? We're all creatures of habit with patterns that need to be broken. And, you know, the hardest thing that we can do is change. Because when you change, you're coming out of your comfort zone into something that's not a comfort zone. And, you know, and that's where fear comes in. It's fear of change, fear of this. So I think you're right. I think, you know, so to, to sort of twist your head and look at it from that perspective, like Esther you know, Esther says, if you mm -hmm. twist that perspective, it's a retraining and it doesn't happen fucking overnight. And I think that's yeah. what happens with people they go on this. They, they try and retrain, you know, they do it. it. It's like, okay, it works great. And then they pitfall. And then all of a sudden they're backwards. And the thing is, you know, if you're trying something new, it's like when you, when you ride a bike, when you first learned to ride a bike, you didn't immediately get on the bike and then just soar. You fell and you yeah. And you still got up and you still tried and you still did it. And that's the same thing with evolution, spiritual evolution in yourself and awareness. You're going to constantly, you know, and I'm not being negative. You're going to constantly backtrack until it becomes natural where you don't even have to think about it. So don't be harsh on yourself. They say fake it till you make it. Exactly. Um, Sha um, Shauna, I just want to say thanks. I want to get to Penny's next song called Legacy. Thanks for calling in, honey. Thanks, Shauna. Thank you, thank you, ladies. Enjoy. I've, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Penny, tell us about Legacy. Legacy is my newest song, actually. I wrote it in 2019. And, um, you know, I've just been thinking about that word a lot. It just keeps coming up. And, and it's like, what kind of legacy do I want to leave 
to the world? What kind of legacy do I want to leave to my kids? And um, my a good friend of mine, Cheryl Ratner Price, started something called the Butterfly Project, where she is all over the world. She is teaching people about Holocaust education mm. in such a beautiful way. And people all over the world in schools all over the world are painting ceramic butterflies and they're being installed in gorgeous installations. So she was kind of my role model when I think about somebody who's leaving such a gorgeous legacy. Mm. So it got me thinking and that's where this song came from. Cool. Yeah. Thank the past for what it gave me, all the laughter and the tears. I thank the past, now I can let go, cause I finally faced my fears. What's done is over, just move forward, keep old stories in the past. Release your worry, let go of fury, time is moving much too fast. So leave a legacy, a legacy, you just need to plant the seed. You can't change the past, but when the thoughts come in, you can choose which ones you feed. What's your legacy, your legacy, the choice is up to you. What your family did was what your family did, but you can just do you. What's the story you want to tell now of your life the way it seemed? You get to choose how to see and tell it. It can be more than you dreamed. I thank the past for all my failures. They have helped me to grow strong. I have a voice and words of wisdom. Now I'm singing my own song. So leave a legacy, a legacy, you just need to plant the seed. You can't change the past, but when the thoughts come in, you can choose which ones you feed. What's your legacy, your legacy, the choice is up to you. What your family did is what your family did, but you can just do you. What's your, What's your passion? What's your purpose? What's the message that you want to leave? Find a way now to express it. All you need to do is just that everything is changing and resistance feeds the fear so calm the mind and then choose wisely set intentions that are clear what's my passion what's my purpose what's the gift i want to give being grateful in joy and kindness it's the only way So leave a legacy, a legacy, you just need to plant the seed. You can't change the past, but when the thoughts come in, you can choose which ones you be. What's your legacy, your legacy, the choice is up to you. What your family did, is what your family did, but you can just do you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that, was, cute. that oh, was great. Oh, thank you. I'm going to shout out to my daughter who did the background vocals and 
and my best friend Sue Diamond as well. So Shireen and Sue were on that, which is great. Right. Well, we're all meeting up again, seeing our loved ones. Isn't it just divine, everyone? Yeah. Seeing our loved ones. Yeah. Sure is. So much fun. Yeah. I think when I heard the song, I don't know why I was hearing the age of Aquarius. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. You know, it's funny because it was just right along the lines with what we were just talking about. It's choosing. Yeah, choosing, choosing happiness. happiness. Right? Yes. Choosing happiness choosing and your happiness. thoughts. Where you and put being, the focus. Yeah, being responsible, you know, responding to your abilities. How's that? You know, and getting in touch with what our abilities are because we're so sensitive and loving and we're powerful. Maybe we're tap tapping into that power. We just don't know what to do with it yet. Or a lot of people are afraid of it, but it's healing, it's creating, it's manifesting. And, and wow, once we get a hold of that, you know, there's no stopping us. Mm -hmm. yeah, right? it's all, it's no all stopping us now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it is all about mindset every single day. It's all about waking up and choosing happiness. It's all about waking up and choosing to be that person that you want to be in your present and in your future every single day. It's a law of attraction. Yeah. Whatever vibrational frequency you're vibrating at, you will attract it. I don't know how people can say that this conversation or what we're talking about could ever be boring. Just saying, I'm sorry, I'm going back. I'm just reverting backwards again. <laughs> someone's, told us, someone's told you we're boring. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. Just saying so, they're boring. Remember, no, we're not boring. No, we're not. We're, we are not boring. Just the sub, the subject matter is boring. Just, it, just remember what people say. It doesn't matter. Oh, I don't fucking care. Right. Um, I really <laughs> don't I think. I mean, I really don't. Like in the beginning, I did. I think in the beginning, you do. I mean, at, at least in the beginning, I you know, you take, and then after a while, you go, yeah, maybe not. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Don't take it personally. People that's, just want to. That's one of the hardest you. lessons in life. Yeah, people want to tear you down when you're succeeding. Don't let them. Right. No, you're not worthy. I mean, I, I love when people say, "Oh, you're jealous of someone," and I look around, and I go, <laughs> "And you knew she." I mean, it's pretty funny because I go, "Me? I have never been jealous or envious." And and by the way, to have jealous or envy, mm -hmm. it's more of a competitive mindset. And and by the way, that person and I. We're not even on the same level. So just like, just, you know, whatever. And, and like women, it's about women, 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 women. We have to stop with this bullshit. We have Boy, to I, get I, I, am, I, I get jealous of some people for sure. I definitely do. I, I get jealous of time. Of be, I, I, cause I, I like to be, I, I like to, well, yeah, everybody knows I like to be the center of attention, but I really <laughs> like to. I like time. I like to, when I'm with someone, I like to be like covet their time. Like this is our time together and the distractions that they do, you know, it, it drives me crazy. And it's like, you know, I don't like to be distracted. If we're having dinner, you know, stop with the fucking phone. Yeah. You know, stop. Don't take the call. I don't care if you have a partner, unless it's an emergency, like I, I won't pick up my phone. If I'm working, if it's in a work day, yes, I, I will always preface it. Hey, look, I've got to check. I still am on, on my work time, but when I'm going out or some, and I'm with one person or two people, I have to honor them and give me and give them my time and my attention. I don't care. You know, you know, look, there is a bat phone and that is, is, you know, if someone calls me and I know, you know, it, it's about my mom from a number, then that's important. It's my mother. Okay. Yeah. But if I had a partner, you know, and my partner knows I'm with my friends, don't fucking bother me unless it's amazing. Unless it's a crisis, leave me alone, you know? Yeah. And I don't like that. I mean, I don't know. I sit there and I go, maybe I shouldn't be in a relationship because I'm, you know, I'm very independent. I don't, you know, I, I, you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, like, okay, here, here's a scenario. Ready? Scenario, ladies. Okay. So ready? Yeah, we're ready. <laughs> you are, you are going to go out with your friend to dinner. Yeah. Okay. Or your friend says, Hey, let's go out to dinner. Okay. And this is straight and gay. Okay. Let's go out to dinner. Do you a ask your significant other to join b tell your significant other 
and then depending on whether your significant other says make a decision or d just say hey to your significant other i'm going out with my friend if i had a significant other that's what i would do that choice three yeah i would do three too mm -hmm. it depends i mean when yeah. i was married, if i wanted to go out with one of my girlfriends or something i would probably say uh yeah i'm gonna go out with so and so and I might give him the option unless it was explicitly said in, in my arrangements with my friend that it was going to be just us. Right. Uh, if my husband was friends with my friend, then my friend would probably want my husband to come too. But unless what if it's just a girl's like, night? What if it's just a, what if it's oh, just, well, if it's just a girl's night? Stick with the girls. Fuck off. I'm going yeah. out. All right. That's I, what I'm saying. Okay. I, I just, I, I just, I just, it, it just, I just had to just check that out. Just I always check, check in. I check in first to make sure that we, you know, I, do we, did we have plans? I just want right. to make sure like, right. Well, that would make sense. The check. I don't ask permission. Mm -hmm. I say, you know, just checking in to make sure that just the respect of, but then I don't ask permission. It's like, well, I'm going to go out with just the same way that he does the same with me. Exactly. That's what I thought. Okay. Moving on. Yeah, That's a relationship. Met, it was yeah. that situation. The night we met was that situation where I told my husband, I'm going to go meet Gay Ann because, you know, I'm going to talk to her about managing me. And, you know, Martha invited me. And then he proceeded to act an ass and blow up my phone and I turned it off. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I remember. Um, hey, look, we're, we're running past, but I do want to just, um, we're running past. We started a little late, but I wanted, um, Penny, quickly in a way, but then you don't know, not quickly, fuck it. Living the dream, A, the CD that's coming out in 2022. Um, how did you come up with the title? How did you come up with this, the next, the last song that we're going to hear from you? What was, what's the, what's sort of the theme of the album? How did you come up with the title? Because I remember when I was working with people that, you know, you guys know, we'd sit there and we'd go, you know, like the whole big thing was the album title. What should we name the album? And, and usually it would just, you know, come out of just a, just a, you, you think so hard to try and figure out an album title. Mm -hmm. And then somebody says something, it's like, it hits it. That's it. So how did, how did you come up with this? That's just one of the songs that I've written that I really, I just really love. Um, I sang it at my daughter's wedding. Um, mm -hmm. I wrote it with my parents in mind. It just, and it was funny because people were saying, I should name it Lighten Up. And I was like, mm, yeah, I just, I don't know. Living the dream just felt right. I just feel like I'm living the dream and everybody has an opportunity to live their own dreams. But you and know what? Even with Lighten Up, you know what? Living the dream, I get. Lighten Up, that's not your legacy. That's not your party line. It's It was someone else's party line that is apropos. So, you know, it, I'm glad you didn't do that because this is yours. This is Thank your you. ownership of this. So let's hear Living Thank the Dream. Thank you. Christian? <laughs> he really has gone to have a wee-wee now. No, I just... think he's had a wee-wee. <laughs> can, can you guys not hear it? No. Oh, we couldn't hear anything. Is there nothing on the MP3 not playing? Yeah, uh, let me try it now. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. My favorite one. When I was just a girl, my parents said to me, you can be anything. Set your mind to be to keep your dreams real big. You reach up for the sky, you never really know till you give it your best, your best try. When you live in the dream. Reality can guide the choices that we make. You better love what you do because your joy is what's at stake. Do what you love and love what you do. Don't wait for tomorrow to make your dreams come, come true. When you're living the dream When you're living the 
Let your spirit sing I think the message here Is to live each day in bliss Present to the now Because that's really all there All there Also say, Gan, this was written partly also for um, our dear friend Mark Coleman, who passed away um, very suddenly in a skiing accident. Oh, about, oh no! Uh, what was it, about seven years ago now? Right. About seven years ago. Is Jan Riev there now? She's not here. here. Oh, okay. But but Mark's thing was carpe diem, carpe diem, baby, mm-hmm. right? And so, you know, this just felt right for him as well. So I kind of wrote with him in mind and my brother helped me with the chords. So yeah, so again, I'm, I love teamwork. <laughs> I love this team, by the way. Can I just say thank you so much? Yeah. I am so honored to have been a part of this. And I just think you're all wonderful. And Dan, I love you. I love you too. And next, um, we want to hear Daga singing too, right? Yes. That'll, that'll come that'll up. Fun. <laughs> That'll come up. Um, I, you know, I realized because Durga's like, hey, you didn't play my any of my music. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> oh, <what the laughs> hair, yes. The album came out. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, well, okay. So, yes, that was my 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 faux pas. Um, but um, anyway, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in, um, all of you out there and all who are going to see it we've got our own freaking legacy that's going to live on the freaking internet. So actually I'm kind of happy. I can't stand the internet, but yet it gives us the, the opportunity to get things out there to all over the world. Um, you know, and it, it's, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun, but you know, it's, it's a different lifestyle. I, I try not to be addicted to it, um, mm-hmm. but it is a vehicle to uh, disseminate positivity and, and love and information um, and not fake news although we have opinions. Trust me, we are very opinionated. Yeah. Um, but there's nothing wrong with being opinionated. So um, having a voice, and I guess you know, this, whole, this whole theme is sort of loving yourself, finding a voice, not having anyone quiet you. You know, you, know, you matter. What you have to say, what you say matters. What you think matters. And 
you know, it doesn't matter. God, how many times I use the word matter? But anyway, it doesn't, who gives a shit if nobody listens to you, to be honest? And who cares who doesn't like you? Who cares who says wants you to change or fit within their mold because you're too odd or you're too eccentric or you're too whatever. It's not about you. It's about them. Mm. And your tribe finds your vibe or vice versa. And I'm not saying those people are evil. I'm a, it's just, you don't click. Now there could be love there and there's always love in the basis of any good relationship. Um, there's love. That's why you stay together. That's why people work, try and work through situations, whether it's in a friendship or a marriage. And it's not really about changing the other person. It's about accepting each other's differences. And that, you know, and that is truly part of what communication is. Not to manipulate, not to control, not to sway, not to force your opinion. It's to always have an open voice. And learning that communication is not just verbal. It's on all levels. So be open-minded. Forgive. Forgiveness. You cannot heal unless you take the first step of forgiveness. So with that, have a wonderful weekend. And, um, you know, I'm going to tell you guys, and I don't fucking care. And I don't even know if I don't even know you. I love you guys. I <laughs> really do. I love, um, love, I love, love everybody you. here and everybody listening. I love you. <laughs> um, you matter to me. So, um, <laughs> so I'm going to go around the room, sign off with everybody. Um, QTE Brat. Uh, Instagram, Between the Sheets Facebook page. You, all the shows are up on YouTube, maybe not as quick as you'd like. I'm really busy at work. I'm really, really busy. Um, Between the Sheets podcast with Gay and Bruno on YouTube. And then the audio portion is everywhere. Um, seriously, anywhere there's a podcast, we're on it. Just look Between the Sheets with Gay and Bruno. Otherwise, I think you'll get a porn site or some lingerie. I don't know. Um, but in any event, thank you so much. We're on the first and third Friday of every month. I, I don't, the next date is, what are we, this is April, right? I think yeah. you said it was yeah. like May 7th. May 7th, May 7th. And that's a monumental day because we have comedian Susan Westenhofer on. Okay. So she's going to be funny. Um, and uh, she's LGBT plus LMNOP, but she also, you know, she's one of the few female comedians back in the day that actually, you know, didn't matter if she's gay, straight or whatever, she crossed over. Um, she crossed over into the mainstream. So I've been a fan of hers for years and think she's funny as fuck. So I am so happy that she's going to be on the show. So May 7th, Suzanne Westenhofer. Let's go around the room. Cheryl Murphy, what's going on? Hey, guys, uh, check out my website. I'm doing events this weekend and next in a couple of weeks, but it's mediumcheryl.com. The same on my Facebook, Instagram, at Medium Cheryl. I'd love to Thank see you, you there. Yeah. Mara Shane. Hey, uh, so you can follow me on Facebook, Mara Shane, uh, marashaneart.com is my website and Instagram, Mara Shane. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Cara Noble. Well, I just, can I, sh can you see that everybody? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that is Beanie. That's Penny's mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. With my son, awesome. Nick. Um, I, I think love it. like dressing up. Don't you get that feeling? That we're so all yes. <laughs> color, color, color. Beanie's yeah. like one of the first drag queens. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> She's very, very cool. What fun it's been, ladies. Thank you. Cara Durga. Durga McBroom. Uh, I may not see you guys again for a while because I have someone actively uh, who just applied for my apartment so if she's approved, she's moving in and I'm going back to Rome. That's why I wanted to do tonight. Thank so, you. Uh, I might try to, you know, duck in on Zoom from there but then I gotta stay up till like 3, 4 in the morning. I know. Which I've, it's, I've done it. I stay up that late anyway. Ooh. But uh, just look for Black Floyd, my album with my sister, the McGroom sisters. Uh, and I'm, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter, uh, Mrs. Durga McBroom, at Mrs. Durga McBroom. On Facebook, it's Durga McBroom fan page, Durga McBroom personal page, which is blocked because I was fighting with a racist. <laughs> um, Pamela McBroom is also on Facebook, but it's it's uh temporarily suspended i don't know why <laughs> uh, so you can find me on 
Carol McBroom on Facebook <laughs> and uh, Durga Diva on Instagram. That's my favorite. In that's my favorite of all your names is Durga Diva. I always love that name. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Roxanne Rosen. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for everything. And Penny, uh, uh, pleasure uh, meeting you. Pleasure being with all you wonderful women as usual. You can find me on Roxanne Rosen at Facebook and love yourself and accept yourself. Aww. Kumbaya. And lastly, Penny Cohen, where can people find you? I've uh, got pennycohenspeech.com for my uh, speech therapy business. And then I think you can find me on Penny Cohen YouTube channel. Yes. Hopefully everything's there. Awesome. Thank you, Penny. Thank oh you. God. Thank you. Thank I'm you. So happy. I'm so happy you went to Cara's <laughs> this weekend. And Cara's like, I don't know if I could do the show. Penny's ours. I will tell her to be on the show. Thank <laughs> you. I really appreciate Perfect. it. What a pleasure. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Christian, for um, running a seamless job. Um, and you know what? I mean, I'm well, I, like, maybe we'll go to the studio on May 7th and maybe Suzanne will just call in, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, thank you guys. Have a wonderful thank weekend. You. I love you to the moon and back. Um, and um, I will see you in two weeks and uh, be safe and be well. And as always, namaste. 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 Cue the music, Christian. That was a great